I was asked to speak about the obligation of believing in the intercession. So tonight's theme as being the intercession. I was asked to speak about the obligation. The first, things, the first thing you have to know before we talk about intercession is the fact that every single human being has to come to a point in their lives, even if you're born Muslim, when your heart realizes that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. There comes a time, you can, be, you can say you're born Muslim or you're, you, know, you, you, you practice the outward aspects of your faith, but in each of our lives there's a time when the truth hits you that this man, Sayyidina Muhammad Wasallam, is the messenger of Allah. And that is when our journey actually begins. When we say and we realize very, very deeply, not because others are saying it around us or because the nasheeds are saying it, when we realize very deeply Muhammad Rasulullah we join all of creation in understanding this. The heavens have always known that Muhammad is Rasulullah. The Arsh of Allah has written on it that Muhammad Rasulullah. The, the, all of the angels know that he is Rasulullah and have always known that. The angels have been commanded not to open the, the gates of paradise unless Sayyidina Muhammad enters into there. And they've been created from the beginning of creation, standing there and waiting. So all of the creation of Allah, even all of the Jibreel alayhi salam, Jibreel alayhi salam, imagine the excitement in his heart when he had to, got to come finally to Sayyidina Muhammad to give that revelation. In the command from Allah was what? Hug my beloved. Hug my beloved. We think the Prophet ﷺ was in awe of seeing Jibreel. Imagine the awe that Jibreel had standing in front of Rasulullah ﷺ and asked to hug the best of creation. All of the Prophets knew. All of the Prophets were sent. Just like they knew Tawheed and they knew their message, they knew that there will come a Prophet at the end named Sayyidina Muhammad ﷺ. In fact, it made, it made their entire mission and purpose makes sense because none of them were sent permanently. None of them were sent for everyone. They knew they had just a small piece of the puzzle, a small piece of the puzzle in a wrinkle in time. And yet they knew that the one to round the entire thing out was Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In fact, even the, even the objects of the earth knew this. Bahira the monk, when the, the Prophet Sallallahu as a boy came into his valley, what did he say he, when he came to Abu Talib and said, this is the last prophet, this is the final prophet. They said, how did you know? He said, because since you guys entered the valley, all of the rocks and the trees have been in sajda and they only do that for a prophet. That, because he had that spiritual insight, imagine what level you'd have to be at with Allah to, to understand that a, a tree is making a sajda or a stone is making a sajda. And yet he knew, what does it mean? It means that even the trees and the stones and the objects knew Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They knew because they had not seen him before, so they knew from before that Muhammad Rasulullah. It was in their DNA. It was in just like how they have atoms, and we know that Subhanallah. Even the clouds knew. Even the disbelievers knew. Even those people of the book, those people of Bani Israel, when they saw the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as a boy playing in Medina when his mother took him there to visit the grave of his father Abdullah. It was said that as the Prophet ﷺ was learning to swim in the wells of Medina as a young boy, the reports say that he was being stared at by a group of men of the Bani Israel and they were giving him this look and somebody else, one of the family members, person who's sincerely concerned for the Prophet ﷺ, advised Amina, Lady Amina, take your son now and go back to Mecca because the Ahl Kitab are looking at him. And it is even said that when the Prophet ﷺ was born, in our reports of, of the narrations of the seerah, it talks about that people coming into Mecca of the people of the book and saying, has there been any, any child born on this night? Has there been any child born on this night? And one of the men of the al Qidai said, yes, a child has been born in this house. And when he went to go, he said, let me see this child. When he saw the child, the report in our seerah book says that he fell unconscious. He fell unconscious. And they said, what's wrong with you? You see one of our babies and you fall unconscious? Like he said, and he just woke up saying, the prophecy has left Bani Israel. Mm -hmm. So even the people who would oppose the Prophet ﷺ knew from far before. So it, it really shows us something. It really shows us something. The Prophet ﷺ's prophet who didn't begin at 40 years old, we think he became a prophet at 40. Never say he became a prophet at 40. 
Because the Prophet ﷺ was a prophet since the creation was made. In fact, they asked him. So then the question comes, when was he a prophet then? If even before him, the prophets knew about him. They asked him this question, Ya Rasulullah, mata kunta nabiyin? When were you a prophet? The Prophet ﷺ said, while, when Adam was still being mixed in his clay, Meaning as far back as anybody can remember. So if this becomes, if is the Prophet Sallallahu prophethood pre-exists, it, it, it basically predates human existence. So it's getting extremely cosmic at this point in time that he's not just a normal human being. He's not just like you and me. He is Bashar. What does Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says? He says, Innama, he said to say to them, Innama ana basharu mithlukum yuha ilay. Annama ilahukum ilahu wahid. Say, tell them, I am just a human being that is just like you, but it has been revealed to me that your Lord is one God, is one God. And that entire difference is what makes Rasulullah his prophethood and his being predate all of the rest of creation. And then the question comes, why was it like that? Why was he sent? Why was he made so special? In order to understand this, you have to understand why Allah created creation itself. Allah created creation to bring servants into the world, human beings and jinn, who would worship Allah. The, Allah SWT says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created the jinn and the mankind, except that they worship me. Ibn Abbas said, what this really means is illa liyarifun, except that they know me. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created all of us and all of humankind so that we get to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But at the same time, at the same time, Allah created us so his love and his mercy could receive an object. Because Allah is Ar-Rahman, but who is there to have mercy on? Allah created us to have mercy on. Allah is Al-Wadud, the loving, but who is there to have mercy? Love on, he created us to be the objects to receive that divine love. Now when Allah created us, he also, subhanAllah, he also knew. And Imam Jafar Sadiq, the fifth, uh, the great, great grandson of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned in <coughs> Qadiyad's uh, Kitab al-Shifa, <coughs> that Allah knew that these people that I'm creating, just between them and me, they would not be able to stand up to my worship. They would not be able to measure up. Human beings fall so short of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's glory and what he deserves. And so, as Imam Jafar al-Sadiq tells us, he says, and so Allah created in a form of a human, Allah created a human being and adorned that human being with ra'fa and rahmah so that he, that human being himself could be described as ra'uf al-rahim from the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but a, f a full human being. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent this most special human form to all of us and said that this is my ambassador. So whoever obeys him, obeys me. And whoever is in harmony with him, is in harmony with me. And this is exactly where, <clears throat> subhanAllah, when Allah says, مَن يُتَعِ Rasul, فَقَدْ أَطَعَ Allah. Whoever obeyed the messenger has obeyed Allah. Now do we understand that if the whole point of our existence is to worship Allah, Allah knew we couldn't measure up to it, so Allah created Rasulullah sent him to us, and if we are in harmony with Rasulullah, we are in harmony with our Lord and our Maker, and understanding the purpose of our existence. And this is why the Prophet Sallallahu this is why there's no other name that was joined to Allah's name except Rasulullah Sallallahu In fact, when somebody tried to say, in, in the presence of the Prophet, oh, if Allah wills, and so-and-so wills. And the Prophet says, stop them, don't say that. Say, if Allah wills, thumma, then if this other person wills. And yet, when it came to Rasulullah, we say, Allah wa rasuluhu a'lam. Allah and his messenger know best. In fact, this is why the Allah SWT says, wa rafa'na laka dhikrak, and we have raised your mention. So, O Muhammad, any time I am mentioned, you will always be mentioned besides me. You cannot be a Muslim, you cannot gain salvation when you say La ilaha illallah until you say Muhammad or Rasulullah. In fact, SubhanAllah, what do we call him? We call him Rasul Allah. Rasul Allah. So his name is completely tied and this is why. This embodiment of mercy is why Allah says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ And we have not sent you except as a mercy, a pure, amazing mercy, where every single aspect 
of you is a mercy, so much mercy, that even those who disbelieve in you will have mercy from you. Why? How? Because all the previous nations, when they abused their prophet, when they made their prophet bleed, when they tortured their prophet, they were destroyed. There was a, there was a punishment, an adab of Allah that came down. And what did the Prophet ﷺ, what did Allah say for this Prophet? They said, وَمَا كُنَّا نُعَذِّبُهُمْ وَأَنْتَ فِيهِمْ We weren't going we to punish humanity as long as you are amongst them. The Prophet ﷺ, his, his presence itself held back the divine wrath. Allah does not punish because why? Rasulullah ﷺ was there. So even those people who were opposing him were actually under his own protection while they were making our beloved Prophet ﷺ bleed. He was still making du'a for them. Oh Allah, they do, they do not know. Do not punish them, they know not. And this is why now, the Prophet Wasallam. so we know his whole life was a mercy for us. And as Ammu Tarif said, his death was a mercy for us too. The Prophet said that. Because your deeds will be shown to him, according to the hadith, and your deeds will be shown to him. He says, if I see something good, I'm going to praise Allah. And if I see something bad, I'm going to ask Allah to forgive you. Who, who do you want to make istighfar for you more than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But then, his death is good for us, but what about after we die? When our deeds are no more and they're not being presented to him. When our deeds come to end, this is where intercession comes now. This is where our theme of tonight comes. This is the shafa'ah. What do we mean by intercession? It's a big word. Shafa'ah means to join. It means something that's to join something against something else. When you're alone, and you're facing a problem, and you bring someone who is, can do something, and you bring them close to you. That is called shafa. It's when somebody else comes in to speak on your behalf and takes care of the matter for you. Now this, where the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet said that Allah created mercy in a hundred parts, and sent only one part of that to the world. And that's why even animals love their young. And 99% of that mercy is saved for the day of judgment. In this world, in the life of the Prophet we saw like one part of his mercy too. And the real beauty and the mercy of Rasulullah will only be witnessed by everyone on the Day of Judgment. Because in this life, there are people who lived and died without knowing him. There are people who lived and died while rejecting him. In the next life, that will not be an option for anyone because they will all need him for their very salvation and their existence. And this is why SubhanAllah, the Prophet this is why Allah SWT says, مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يَشْفَعُ عِنْدَهُ إِلَّا بِإِثْنِهِ In Ayatul Kursi. And in Ayah, al Ayatul Kursi is an Ayah about Allah's greatness. But then Allah says, Who can ever intercede in front of Allah except with Allah's permission? And that one who has that permission is Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is why the Prophet Sallallahu he would stand up all night praying to Hajjud on one verse. وَإِن تُعَذِّبَهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ عِبَادُكَ That, oh Allah, if you punish them, then they are your slaves after all. But if you decide to forgive them, then indeed you are the mighty and the wise. And the Prophet ﷺ was crying over this ayah and saying, my ummah, my ummah, my ummah, my ummah. Why? Because even though the verse is about Allah can forgive if he wants and Allah can punish, he could not leave his ummah to that chance. He could not leave his ummah to that Unsurety, will Allah forgive or will Allah not forgive? And so he was crying, my ummah, my ummah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hadith is mentioned, Imam Ghazali also mentions this hadith. Allah said to Jibreel alayhi salam, go and see why my prophet is crying. What makes him cry? Even though Allah knows. Jibreel alayhi salam went to the prophet alayhi salam and asked him, what makes you cry? And he said, this is the following reason I'm crying for my ummah. Why? Because he doesn't know if we're going to be forgiven or if we're going to be punished. And so, Jibreel salam, went back with the answer and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Jibreel, tell him we will make you pleased with your ummah and we will not make you disappointed. Right? Right? So uh, this is what shafa'ah is about. It's for the pleasure of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa to make sure that his ummah does not remain in that situation. Once Ubay, how much, how much time do we have? Two minutes? One minute, okay. I'll just, I'll end it with this, mashallah. There's so many things we can say. There's so many things we can say about the shafa of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ said that on the day of judgment, all of the prophets will be seated on members of light. After the, after the judgment has taken place and many of the Muslims will be in Jannah, some of the Muslims will be 
burning in hellfire for the crimes that they did. Some of the Muslims will still be in the hellfire. And all of the, the Anbiya have gone and taken their seats. And the Prophet said, except my mimbar, it will remain empty. I will remain standing out of fear that if I take my seat, the doors of Jannah will be closed and that some of my ummah will be left outside in hellfire. And then the Prophet ﷺ says, and I will continue to go back to my Lord and beg him and beg him and cry until Allah will say, what do you want, O Muhammad? And the Prophet ﷺ will say, ummati, ummati, my ummah, my ummah. And eventually he will be given a piece of paper with the names of these men who are condemned for a long time to hell. And he will say, oh Allah, make their sentences shorter. Make their sentences shorter. He will take this paper and he will go to hellfire and take out even those very sinful Muslims and he will take them out and take them with him and it will be to the point where the keeper over the hellfire will say, O Muhammad, didn't you leave anyone for the punishment of your Lord from your ummah? This is the reality of intercession. So when we add, and then they will be taken forever, inshallah, we will be forever with Rasulullah So when we talk about the obligation to get back to the topic of believing in the intercession. We can tick off, tick, tick off a box in an Aqidah book, but it's more than this. It's a, it's a debt of gratitude. It is, the, it is obvious and shining as brilliant as the sun, that when anyone connects to their heart to Rasulullah you will have no choice but to be indebted to him, but to believe in his intercession and live your entire life living preparing for that intercession. That's why the Prophet ﷺ used to say to anyone who was suffering of his companions, مَوْعِدُكُمْ الْحَوْدْ Our meeting point is going to be the watering pool, inshallah, with Rasulullah ﷺ, and that will get us through our trials. May Allah SWT make us of those who meet the Prophet ﷺ at his hold in a state where he is pleased with us, and we feel his warm embrace, drink from kawthar from his hands, and be with him forever, inshallah, in Jannah. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Takbir, takbir, takbir. May Allah grant us the shafa'ah. Say ameen. La ilaha illallah, 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 Muhammad Rasulullah, alayhi salatullah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله عليه صلاة الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله لا إله إلا 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 الله محمد رسول الله عليه chapter twelve لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إن chapter twelve from the English Burda in the Umayyad, we were Ilaha in the law, 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 Muhammad Rasulullah, Ali, the Umayyad. لا إله إلا الله 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 محمد رسول الله عليه صلاة الله then he went back to Medina living life with his Ansar but the day was fast approaching that they all 
combat was far. First he told all his companions that this Hajj would be his last. To adhere to all the things that he had taught them in the past. Then when seeing off a traveler this last advice he gave. When you come next year you might find just my bullshit and my grave. When the time to part came closer all the hearts were filled with fear. What will happen if he leaves us in this world? There's none more dear in his final illness. Abu Bakr led the daily prayer. From his room the Prophet smiled, giving one last look of care. Then as our beloved Prophet lay in Ayesh's arms, he spoke. Guard your prayers, fear Allah, and how you treat your servant folk. Then he gazed into the heavens and began to say softly, Allahumma gather me into the highest company. Allahumma gather me into the highest company. Allahumma gather me into the highest company. And without the Prophet loves this world, the universe shed tears. All the precious time they'd had with him had been the best of years. La ilaha illallah. Illallah, la ilaha illallah, Muhammad, illallah, la ilaha 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 illallah, how I wish I'd met the Prophet to touch his soul. Soft hands with mine, or oh, to look upon his face from which prophetic light would shine, or oh, to shield him when the rocks were thrown so they'd hit me instead. But my consolation comes in what Rasulullah had said While my life was good for you, my death will be good for you too. I'll be shown your deeds, so when I see a sin, I'll pray for you. And he said, Oh, people, if you one day face calamity find your strength by thinking of the pain you felt by losing me when he asked his colonel his companions asked then who are we friends he said my brothers never saw me yet believed in me Long to meet the messenger, then patience is the key. Start of the, year. Of the hereafter. Okay, we'll try it like this, okay? okay this is, this is how we do it at that leaf, so this is how we do it. So in between every single one of the couplets, I want you all to say, Muhammad Rasulullah alayhi salatullah. Muhammad Rasulullah alayhi salatullah. Muhammad Rasulullah alayhi salatullah. How I wish I had the prophet to touch his soft hands with mine, or to look upon his face. Light would shine. Muhammad Rasulullah, alayhi salatullah. Muhammad Rasulullah, alayhi salatullah. Or to shield him when the rocks were thrown, so they'd hit me instead. But my consolation comes in what Rasulullah had said. Muhammad Rasulullah. Alayhi salatullah While my life was good for you My death will be good for you too I'll be shown your deeds So when I see a sin I'll pray for you Muhammad Rasulullah Alayhi salatullah And he said Oh people if you one day face calamity Find your strength by thinking Of the pain you felt by losing me Muhammad Rasulullah when he missed his brothers, his companions asked, Then who are we? Friends, he said, My brothers never saw me yet believed in me. Muhammad Rasulullah, Salatullah, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah.
la ilaha illa Allah, la ilaha illa Allah, la ilaha illa Allah, la ilaha illa Allah, la Muhammad Rasulullah, alayhi salatullah. Now this is the, the day of judgment and beyond. And I want you all to, to reflect on each single meaning of what we're saying, and then I want your hearts to cry out, Muhammad Rasulullah alayhi salatu alayhi. If you long to meet the messenger, then patience is the key. At the start of the hereafter, you will see him finally. He will be the leader of humanity on Judgment Day. After all, he was the messenger when Adam was still clay. Muhammad Rasulullah When the prophets on that day will only say nafsi nafsi, he will plead before Allah, crying, My Ummah Ummati. Muhammad Rasulullah he will bow and praise Allah in words no one before has said. He'll be granted intercession as he lifts his noble head. Muhammad Rasulullah alayhi salatullah. He will beg Allah to pardon us so sinner don't despair. He won't take his seat in heaven till his ummah joins him there. Muhammad Rasulullah alayhi salatullah. Allahumma join us with your chosen prophet on the day when the world is ready. Resurrected with the souls in disarray. Muhammad Rasulullah alayhi salatullah. Let us gain his intercession when we're taken to account. Let us quench our thirst forever when we meet him at his fount. Muhammad Rasulullah alayhi salatullah. When a man once asked for heaven in the Prophet's company, help me get you this, he told him by Prostrating frequently. Muhammad Rasulullah alayhi salatullah. If we fear that our good deeds are few and sin stacked high above, our last hope is as he told us, you'll be with the one you love. Muhammad Rasulullah alayhi salatullah. Because loving is believing and our faith is not yet full. Till we love him more than parent, child, and every single Muhammad Rasulullah alayhi salatullah La ilaha illallah La ilaha illallah La ilaha illallah La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah alayhi salatullah La ilaha illallah La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah alayhi salatullah Such a beautiful creation mortal eyes had never seen Nor had women given birth to one so perfect and pristine Muhammad Rasulullah alayhi salatullah So complete in form and meaning and from every blemish free As if he had been created just the way he'd want to be Muhammad Rasulullah alayhi salatullah Best of those who ever lived or ever walked upon the earth Sinless since the blessed day on which his mother gave him birth Muhammad Rasulullah alayhi salatullah No one ever saw before and nor thereafter ever sees Like the prophet Amazing, in amazing song Muhammad Rasulullah he was one of Bani Adam, but between himself and them was as though mankind were stones and as though he a priceless gem. Muhammad Rasulullah Even if he had not come with any miracle or sign, just the sight of him would tell you that he came from the divine. Muhammad 
Never should we think that by these words the Prophet has been praised. Rather through his blessed mention it's our words that have been raised. Muhammad Rasulullah For Allah himself has praised him when he said so perfectly. Truly you are on a station of sublime integrity. Muhammad Rasulullah Joyous tidings to those who believed when he called to Allah. Since he was the the best of prophets, we became the best Ummah. Muhammad Rasulullah, Salatullah. La ilaha illallah, 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 Muhammad Rasulullah. La ilaha illallah, 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 la ilaha Masha Allah, Masha Allah, Masha Allah. What do you guys, let's take a vote. The American Buddha or the English Buddha? Which one? Both. 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 Takbir. The most amazing... <laughs> most amazing song ever. If you don't know, if you, if you haven't, if you, if you don't know about it, look it up. Zayn Bika sings it very, very beautifully on YouTube. It's a summary of the entire Sira in one song. Your children can read it, study it, learn it. And there's all these hidden secret hadith and gems in there too. I know one teacher, he's doing a, a sharh about the song. <laughs> Teaching it. Yani takbir. MashaAllah, how many years did it take you to write this song, Sayyidi? 12 years. Takbir. Allah. Amazing, amazing. MashaAllah, MashaAllah.